Hello, this is GCSE Physics Explained. This lesson's on resultant forces. The resultant force is the overall result of all the forces acting on an object. So what this table here shows you is uh, general scenarios where, which will help you to solve most problems to do with resultant forces. In an exam, It'll often tell you what the object is doing at the start, uh, what the resultant force is acting on the object, and then basically you need to see what the effect on the object will be. So in the first example, the object at the start is not moving. It'll say it's at rest. When you look at the forces that are acting on the object, let's just say the six newtons forwards and six newtons backwards they are equal in size but opposite in direction, so they cancel out, like a tug of war team. So there's zero newtons acting on that object. So the effect of the object, well, if it's not moving at the start and it's got zero newtons acting on it, zero force acting on it, well, it's just going to stay at rest, isn't it? Now, on the second example, just say you've got an object that's moving at 3 metres a second. Now when you look at the resultant forces on it, again, you've got 3 newtons forwards this time and 3 newtons backwards. So again, it's got 0 newtons on it. It could be 4 newtons forwards and 4 newtons backwards. I've just, that's just the example I've given. So anyway, because it's moving at 3 metres a second and it's got uh, 0 overall force on it, it's basically going to keep on doing what it was doing, just like before. But we as before, it wasn't moving, so it stays not moving. Now it's moving with a steady speed, so it's just going to keep on moving with a steady speed. Right, example three. Just say there's an object and it's moving, uh, and this time it's got a non-zero resultant force, and it's acting in the same direction that the object's already moving. So there's your object. What do I mean by non-zero resultant force? Well, just a number that's not zero. So there's 10. That's not zero. And it's acting in the same direction that the object's already moving. So basically, if you were running from left to right and one of your mates came and pushed you from behind like that, they're just going to make you go faster in the direction that you're already travelling. So the object will accelerate. So I've just said it was going 5 at the start, it's just going to go faster, so I've just said 7. Again, I could have said 8. Basically the important thing is it's going to be moving faster than it was at the start. And the final general scenario in an exam, it might say that you've got an object and it's already moving. This, this time I've just said 10 metres a second. Again, it's to the right. Now, when you add up all of the forces acting on it, Let's just say you've got a non-zero resultant force in the opposite direction that it's moving. So like 9 newtons. Okay. So if the object's moving from left to right and you've got the force going backwards, well, basically the object's going to slow down, isn't it? So the object's going to decelerate uh, and eventually the object will actually stop. And if the force was still being applied to it, then it would start getting dragged backwards. Again, it's just like you playing rugby or something like that. You're legging it across the pitch like this. Someone comes along, grabs your collar, yanks you backwards like that. Basically, it's going to start slowing you down. Okay. Now, here's some information. If there is no resultant force on an object, i.e. all forces are balanced, the overall resultant force is going to be zero. So we say the object will continue to be stationary if it is already stationary, or if it's moving with constant speed, it will remain moving with constant speed. Remember, unbalanced forces can do four things to an object. It can change its direction, it can change its shape, it can make the object speed up, or it can make it slow down. So for example, playing football, ball gets crossed in, you jump up and nut the ball, uh, you change the ball's direction. And also, while you're nutting it, the ball will change its shape. 
and the ball will speed up in its new direction. And I guess if the goalkeeper grabs it, his force will make it slow down. Right, examples of how to calculate resultant forces. Just say you've got this object here, 10 newtons upwards, 8 newtons downwards. What will the resultant be? And this one here. This time, the object uh, has got 3 newtons going upwards and 2 newtons going upwards. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to add them together or are you going to take them away? Let's have a look. Right, well here's some more examples first before we take a look. I've got three newtons upwards, I've got three newtons downwards, and I've got four, four newtons to the right. And this one here, look at that. Three newtons up, one newton down on that side, two newtons up on that side, two newtons going to the right on that side, four newtons on that side, three newtons on that side, on the barnacles. Right, so here's your, here's your answers. If you've got ten up and eight down, that's like tug of war. They're not working with each other. They're working against each other. And this team here, if it was tug of war, this team upwards would win by two newtons. We've got two newtons of extra force. This one, three newtons upwards, two newtons upwards. Ask yourself this question. Are they going in the same direction, even though they're on opposite sides? Yes, they are. So you add them together, and that comes up with five. Now, it wouldn't matter if you'd said five upwards from there or five upwards from the down. It just, as long as it's five, going upwards. And here's some more complicated ones. Right, so that's three up and three down. Well, they're just going to cancel out. So that's just going to leave the four newtons across to the right. And this one here. Right, resolve the forces going up and down first. So look at this. That's going two upwards, and that's three upwards. So that's five upwards. But this one's pointing downwards, so that's one down. So five up, one down, that just leaves four up. And this thing here, I've got two going across to the right and four going across to the right. So that's six going to the right. And then I've got three going to the left. So that's going to try to cancel them ones out a little bit. So that's just going to leave three to the right. And that's pretty much how to take care of business with that. Thank you very much for now. Goodbye.